I'm Ellen Clark and I was 17 when the war broke out and I worked in a munitions factory but which, we, which I didn't really know really useful because we were all doing making peace parts, bridge boards, etc. And also, when the war started, all this new work came in. So, of course, everybody, it was here, there and everywhere. We was working uh, seven days a week, Saturday and Sunday. And then after that, we went on to night work because we wasn't, there wasn't getting enough supplies through to the forces. And then we, there we did a fortnight about, there again from seven at night till about seven in the morning. Mind you, it wasn't all work. We did have some fun because in the uh, lunch break, this was when we was night work, when there wasn't so many bosses about, there was one girl there, she was really good. She bought an old gramophone in and they decided that they'd make up concerts and things. Well, you never see such things all bits of paper, paper skirts, and made a little concert which really helped. Not only that, some Bright Spark decided that we all had collections, often had collections for the forces and what was going on, and some Bright Spark decided that we all brought our photo in each and let them see who we was, who we were writing to. Well, when the photos come back, a lot of them wanted to stop writing to the chaps that they'd got. Oh, it was really Oh, it was really sad. My one, oh, honestly, but my mother said, look, no good you laughing, you started it, you finish it. You don't let poor chap be waiting for an answer from you. So of course I had to, but what I didn't realise, my mother was, of course we had, I came from a big family, and of course there were six brothers and one sister, all in the forces. So of course that helped my mother to fill her letters up, what I was doing, and that I had now got a young man. Well, she tried the hardest when I found out what she was doing for me to let her borrow my photo, but I never did. But still, I've still... Um I'm Phyllis Myers. Um, eight, I was 18 when the war broke out, but I was already in factory then, so I never got called up or anything like that. And um, I worked on a milling machine in there. It was all um, things for the war and um, quite nice. And, um, <clears throat> and we did have a lot of fun and I did work night work for two years. And you wasn't allowed a holiday or anything like that. If you, had a ho if you did have a holiday, you had to go and work on a farm, which I did for a fortnight. That was hard work and little pay, but um, other than that, um, you had a job to get home um, of an evening and morning to get to work because the air raids was on when you came out, out of work of evening and they were still on when you went in the mornings. And, um, you know, that was quite funny at times. But you was all, always seemed to glad to get home and if there was an air raid, in the daytime and you was at work, you always thought, oh, I hope I can get home in time when you was knocked off work, um, to, as long as your house was standing there and all the family and everything. How we came to, how we came to get a holiday, because we didn't get no holidays, because as say, you were so busy. Well, we found out from somewhere that if you was on munitions, you hadn't had a holiday, you could go on the farm, work on the land, because, what I did, we were very, very lucky. Um, we went to Malmesbury in Wiltshire, and what we were doing, this, there was four of us went. We was cutting cabbages, and they had to be picked the best ones, and they all had to be um, made into pulp and tinned up to go out to serve the forces. Well, on the Sunday when we were there this week, the um, lady came round that took us out to the different farms, and she said, I've "Got a nice surprise for you." She said. Queen Mary is coming to visit you all today. So she said, you'll all, all be working a bit later. So of course went out and we was working with these um, med medical students. So they said to us, come over here with us, work with us, because we've got a pack of cards. We'll have a game of cards till she can't come. So we did, we all sat playing cards. We could hear everybody cheering in the distance. So then of course we all got back to cutting the cabbages. But when the Queen came along, 
So we all had to line up for her to see us and she was speaking to us all. And I kept my head down because I thought, well, I didn't know whether to call a man, miss or what. I was so excited. So this Marjorie next to me, she said to her, oh, she said, um, do you like gardening? So she said, oh, yes, ma'am. So she said to her, and what lovely boots you got on. She said, where did you get those? Oh, she said, I've had them a long while. And she kept nudging me for, to say something, but I still kept my head down. Anyway, off she went. Then we all went back to where where Billet was, where we were stationed, and then they showed us where the Queen Mother and all the entourage had had her tea. Oh, it was lovely. It was all these little teeny, little teeny thin sandwiches. She'd had a little bite out of this and a little nibble of the cake. So, of course, they were all, all taking turns to sit in the chair and having some of the food, what she had to eat. And I don't think I ever forgot that. In fact, I've got the photo with me today, if you'd like to see it. My name is Flo Batley. And um, the war broke out when I was 17, so my mates had told me. <laughs> um, I hadn't had such an interest in life. I was living in where I was working, uh, in a coffee shop sort of thing. We're during the raids at the, in the city. I worked in the city. Um, because I had such a bad time, my husband we, we, it was a customer. And he said, well, I'm not having this. We'll get married. So within six months of him being the customer, we got married. So naturally, I, um, I had a baby the following year, 1942. And uh, from that, and a year and nine months after that, I had a daughter in 1944. So I was really tied up with the children. But for a holiday, um, I just went down to the hop fields and um, sort of thing like that. Um, I was evacuated three months when the baby was first born and the farmer's wife was, um, well, she was the farmer. She was rather nasty. She used me as a slave. I had to do all the housework, all the washing. The two children went lousy with the lice. Um, I had to cut all their hair off and because she, um, she used to pluck her birds and they were full of lice. And she said, I don't know what you're worrying about. They won't hurt. Well, I cried and I got to my mother and um, I said, I can't stand this, it's making me ill. She wouldn't even mind the children while I went out. So I came home in three months and sort of uh, got through the raids. I thought if anything was going to happen, I'd be at home and uh, let it happen. My husband was in the army and I used to just um, do jobs just to get a cigarette or so. And, um, um, so I wasn't a working lass going in munitions or anything like that. It was just family. Well, I had to done all the decorating and painting and um, looking after the children, <coughs> excuse me, because in that time I was begging the WVS to give me something for the second child. I never had a napkin and I used to walk about four miles in the, with the, baby, the boy in the pram. And when I was, in fact, the day that I did walk, I was confined, napkin. So, and I ne never even had a cot for the girl. She I had to put her in the chest of drawers. So that was her start in life. My name is Laura Murphy, and I met my husband in 1938. And he was called up before the war was declared because he was on the army reserve. And he knew he'd be sent to France if there was a war, which he was. But before he went, he didn't know whether we would get any leave or not, so we decided we would get married directly. He came home from France. Um, he went to France, as I say, in August 1939, and he was out there until Dunkirk, just before Dunkirk, and he was sent home, unfit for service abroad. So he came home just before Dunkirk, and we got married in June 1940. Um, I was always in service before I got married. So when I knew I was getting married, I left service and got a room, my husband got me a room down in Andover. And I stayed down there with him after we got married until January 1941, when he was demobbed from the army. So I didn't know what to do then. So I decided to go and work in a factory. Well, I realize now it's the same factory what these two ladies have been talking about. But I hated it. <laughs> I'd always been in service and I was sent to this factory and I had to walk right across a big yard. And when I went in this big room, 
there was all these great big machines and there was men and women working them. And I actually, they told me I was working in the packing shop. But when I went in this packing shop, it was a great big room and there was lines and lines of women all standing up, counting these things and putting them in boxes. And I started counting one at a time and the man told me if I didn't count quicker than that, I'd be out the job by the end of the day. <laughs> so I had to start counting quickly. I did that for a fortnight. I hated every moment of it because at the time at lunchtime, everybody had to rush to clock off and to go to get their food. And all I can remember was I didn't know where anything was, so I was the last one to get clocked off and the first one to be clocked back on again and I had to eat my dinner, which was sandwiches. I really detested it. And at the end, I found out in January 41, I was pregnant. And um, they were very good to us. They gave us all the extra food, extra coupons for everything. We attended the antenatal clinic. And um, people in the shops were very good. The old ladies, if you used to go round to the butcher shop and you'd be in a queue, and the butcher called out, we've got sausages this morning. The old girls would push me to the front and say, come on, dear, you're expecting, get up the front of the queue, you don't want to be standing here. The greengrocer would call out then, if we went to the greengrocers. Any expectant mums in the queue? Front of the queue for you, dear. So up again, we toddled to the front of the queue and got the... And I was in Greenwich Hospital having my baby in 1941, August. While I was in there, the raid went on. Zarine went. The nurses rushed into the ward took all the babies out, left us mums in the ward. So it took the babies to safety. So all us mums were all panic-stricken in the ward, wondering what had happened to the children and what was going to happen to us. Until the siren went, they brought the babies back and all we could keep on looking at the babies to make sure we had the right baby because we wasn't sure. <laughs> so we were looking at all the thoughts of them. Anyway, we were um, kept, kept in the hospital, hospital for 14, 14 days. days. And after that we came out. My husband, as I say, was invalided out of the army. So he was back in hospital again soon after. He came out again and I went back, you know, looked after the baby. And two or three mothers then gradually started going back to work. And their children at school, you know, they'd come home from evacuation. So I decided just to look after the children, you know, the children. So I was looking after their children as well as my own. My husband was working, but only light work. So the things were very difficult and we used to knit a lot and so, and all this uh, knitting, used to save every bit of wool we could get. So we made cardigans and jumpers for the children. And they turned around like my little girl then was in, as she, I called it, her rainbow jumper. So in the end, all the kids wanted a rainbow jumper. So I'm just knitting all these jumpers with odd bits of wool to make them all the same. <laughs> and we used to make all the clothes for them. And I'd never had any dressmaking lessons, so we tried and we made them. And then, during the war, at one particular time during the war, we went shopping, my mother came back from evacuation, and we went shopping. And when we went into one of the shops, mum said to me, go and ask the greengrocer lady, she'll give you some tomatoes. And the lady said no, because I wasn't rushing there, we didn't have our ration books. Anyway, while we were there, then the um, siren went, and a bomb started coming over, you know, um, for aeroplanes dropping the bombs, and Mum said, quick, get the baby out of the pram, lay on the floor and put the baby underneath you, which I did. Mum laid on the ground and all the other people laid on the ground, the bombs were dropping. When the siren went, she said, quick, get back up now and go and ask her if she's got any tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> went back in the shop, Mum let me, they let me have the tomatoes in, because she thought we were going to be bombed, I think. <laughs> and that when, you know, the war went on, I was looking after the children, and as a couple of times my husband was in hospital and came out again. And 1944, I'd been sleeping down the shelter quite a lot with my little girl because the raids were bad, the doodle bugs I think they were, or the other, what were the other bombs? B2s. And she got an awful cough. And the doctor said that it was a shelter cough. I'd taken to the doctor and told me it was a shelter cough and I ought to evacuate with her. And I evacuated because I went to Woolwich and they said that I should go to, um, come down the next day, they'd give me transport. So other women and myself went on the back of a lorry to get to the station. When we got to the station then at London, we had to go to Bradford. And when I got to Bradford, there was an um, ambulance waiting to take my daughter to the hospital for six weeks because she had hoof and cough and pneumonia. And I wasn't allowed to see her for that six weeks she was in hospital. That broke my heart. <laughs> 
and that was more or less the end of the war. So that's what I did. I was a mum looking after my baby and other people's children. 